welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're going to continue on our alignment and calibration series for our machine. If you recall, we did leveling, we did uh, parallelism of the table, we did straightness. Our next step that we want to do is squareness of the table. So our goal here is to try to get our table dialed in as perfect as we can before we move on to other operations in the machine. And squareness is an extremely important adjustment. Uh, by far, your table being out of square will leave you the most inaccuracies in your parts, especially as your parts get bigger. Now, so we're not talking about squareness of how true the table is running. We're talking about squareness of x, uh, x relative to y motion. And the way that that is controlled is the angle of the saddle sitting on the Y rails. So you have one set of rails, whether they're linear or boxways, running in Y. You have a saddle, which is just a hunk of steel, and then your X is bolted to that saddle. Now that saddle has adjustments in it to rotate it relative to X and Y. And it's that rotation that controls your squareness. If your machine is out of square, what's going to happen is if you want to drill a four bolt hole pattern on a large piece of material, say 12 inches or 18 inches, if your machine's out of square a couple of thou uh, over 10 inches, when you get to 20 inches, now you're out, you know, six, seven thou. And it just amplifies from there because it's an angular measurement. So then your holes end up being in a parallelogram shape rather than a square shape. So this is important. Let's go to the machine. Uh, we're going to use a precision granite square again. Uh, we used this uh, piece of equipment in the previous video to measure our straightness. Uh, now we're going to use it to measure our squareness. Let's go over to the machine and take some measurements. We're back at the machine. Now I'm recording a lot of these videos at the same time while I got everything uh, out and everything taken apart while I'm doing my yearly maintenance. So the, the square is already set up again from our straightness test. We'll just run back and forth one more time in X uh, just to make sure that the long side of the square is sitting perfectly straight and running parallel uh, with the act mo mo uh, motion of X. Got a little tongue twisted there. So if you recall in our last video, our X is running very straight and very true. And again, this dial indicator, each number on the dial indicator is four ten thousandths of an inch. Each minor hash mark is 75 millionths. So you can see we are very, very straight. We've got a little tiny bit of tail off there at the very end. So now that our granite square is running straight and parallel with X, now we can reposition our dial indicator uh, to test Y. We want to be very careful that we don't bump the square uh, while we do this test. Try to keep it in frame of the GoPro here. So we just rotated our indicator onto this face of the granite square. We're at zero. 
Now we're just going to sweep down the edge of the square and see how much uncertainty we have along the edge of the square. So that's our full Y motion. You can see that the indicator really didn't move at all. We'll sweep back and see if it's repeatable. So we, we see maybe about a hash mark, a little more. That's about 75 millionths of an inch. We are well within the uncertainty of our granite square. So this machine is dialed in. Now that's across the full uh, nine inches of, of travel here. So that's a very square machine. And again, the reason why this machine is so square is I spent a lot of time adjusting it. Uh, when I bought this machine, uh, this machine was over five thousandths of an inch out of square over ten inches, which is a lot. Now your machine may need adjusting. Again, uh, just like with our straightness, we can adjust for squareness issues. And the way that we adjust for squareness is we need to rotate the entire saddle, so this guy here. Um, if you have boxed ways, you're going to need to adjust your, your gibs and the shims in your gibs to get that rotation. If we have a linear way machine like this one, what we need to adjust is we need to adjust the mounting of the trucks to the saddle. And to do that, uh, we're going to use some shim stock and a little bit of elbow grease. So let me take the camera off the tripod again, and I'll try to get a shot of the trucks underneath the table for Y and, and show you kind of the adjustment procedure. So we're looking at the very bottom of the machine, this bottom piece all the way down here, that's the bed of the machine, that's the casting, or in this case, this is a weldman. Uh, this here is the truck, and it is bolted up through the bottom uh, to the saddle. So in order to adjust squareness, what you want to do is you have to first loosen all of the bolts on the trucks. Now that makes it so that the table will be able to be turned in this position. Now if you notice here, we've got these little blocks in here. Now the reason these blocks are in here is there are set screws that go this way to push these trucks against a ground reference rail right here. Now if your machine is built perfect, these trucks will be flush and uh, uh, firm against this ground surface, and then you'll tighten these two trucks down first, test your squareness, and if your squareness is good, then you'll go to the other side and tighten the other two down. To adjust the squareness of the machine, what we need to do is we need to loosen these set screws on whichever uh, truck we're going to put a shim in. So if we want to uh, rotate the table this way, we need to shim the back side. If we want to rotate the table this way, you know, in a clockwise direction, we're going to shim the front side. And that's what I needed to do. And you can kind of see uh, the piece of shim material. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. See the little piece of shim right there? That's all it takes uh, to either have a machine perfectly in square or really gratuitously out of square is that little tiny piece of shim stock. So what you do is you take some measurements and then you measure the distance between the trucks and you figure out 
how much shim stock you need. You loosen everybody up, you put your shim stock in, then you snug down your set screws, and then you tighten your truck back up on this side. These are the master trucks. Then you do your squareness test again. If your squareness test is good, then we can tighten our other trucks down, call it a day. So that is how you adjust squareness on a linear machine. Uh, boxway machine again, same concept, it just has different screws to turn. Now that we have our X and Y axes of motion squared and nice and perpendicular to each other, there is one more adjustment that you can do to the table if you wish, and I suggest you do this and spend the time to do it. And, and basically that is just squaring the T slots of the table to the X plane of motion. Just like squaring the saddle so that we're making X and Y perfectly perpendicular, you can take a dial indicator and just indicate off the slot of a T-slot and run the table back and forth and make sure that that T-slot runs straight and parallel with X motion. The reason for this is it just makes installing your vise a little bit easier. If you use keys on your vise, most of the time you can just plop the vise in Make sure it's seated against the side of a T-slot, tighten it up, and it's going to be pretty darn good. It's going to be within a thou or two. So it reduces the amount of time that you have to uh, square up your vise. Other than that, it really doesn't serve any purpose in accuracy other than making your life a little bit easier. Now you can adjust the straightness of the table T-slots the exact same way as we adjust the saddle. Uh, if it's a boxway machine, we're going to have to adjust the gibbs. If it's a linear machine, we're going to loosen all the cars again and then put shim stock between the car and the table itself and just rotate the table. Now keep in mind, any time that you make an adjustment to anything, you have to start all the way back at step one and check level. And then work your way through the progression again. So if you have to do a lot of adjustments and a lot of things are out, you have to keep starting from square one and progress a little farther each time, a little farther each time, and chip away at this. So if you have a machine that's grossly out in all these adjustments, it's going to take you a little bit of time to dial it back in. As you can see, with the accuracies that we're holding here, you can easily take a used machine, so this is a 1994 machine, and we're cutting within a thousandth of an inch in X and Y. That's pretty good for this machine, but it took some time to get there. It's time well spent if you want to turn out some nice high accuracy parts. I hope you're enjoying our videos on how to adjust the line uh, and do some machine maintenance on your machine. In our next video, now that we have our table squared away, pun intended, uh, we're going to work on the Z column. So we have everything done on the table that we need to do. That we need to do. We have a good datum. It's a good reference. It's straight. It's true. It's square. Now we have to make sure that our tools coming down to our parts are the same way. So join me again for uh, another video on Z, and we're going to talk about how to align Z.